Hey guys, Spider Games here. In this video, I'm going to show you all the best possible equipment that you can use during zombie invasions. And I'm going to show you how to use it too. First up is going to be the grapple hook. Next is going to be the UV flashlight, of course. And then we're going to go over the flares, including Zade's flares. After that, it's going to be potions like the Night Hunter boosters and cloak potions. I'm going to show you camouflage too. And then there's the shields. Um, there's other equipment too, but I'm not going to show it just because it's not the best. And yeah. Anyways, let's get to it. First up is the grapple hook. The grapple hook is a piece of equipment you get from the quartermaster after you reach survival level 12 it's probably the most important piece of equipment not only because you can travel faster during zombie invasions but if you get hit by the horde you can get up a building a lot faster than uh, climbing anyways but there's a million reasons why the grapple hook is probably the best i'll show you a couple good reasons right here but if you miss a drop kick for example you can use a grapple hook to cancel the drop kick animation just because if the night hunter is near you when you miss a drop kick he can punish you usually grappling away from spits that land right next to you is a lot better than running or dodging if you get in the habit of using your grapple to get away from spits you're gonna be more successful in getting away from them it's also useful for doing drop attacks on night hunters if they're next to a bridge or anything high enough to where you can get into the drop attack animation um, you're gonna give that night hunter a real hard time I know they give me a hard time doing it Hitting the Night Hunter with a grapple hook does a little bit of damage too if you're lucky the night hunter will die from it Running around on the ground without a grapple hook is very risky and you're not going to be very successful with it, so make sure you get that grapple hook. Next up is the UV flashlight. It's the most important piece of equipment just because you can't play zombie invasions without it. But you get it from the quartermaster in the very beginning, like at level 1 or something. But right here I'm using a technique that people usually use wrong because you don't want to blink at the night hunter before he runs out of stamina because it drains him slower and he'll usually escape. Instead you want to hold down that light until you see him explode, then you start blinking. Now, this is used to keep the Night Hunter on the ground if the Night Hunter is escaping. You want to drain him of all the stamina and then start blinking. You can blink slower than I am here, but you can usually hold him on the ground long enough to kill him. The UV flashlight's main purpose, of course, is to block pounces from the Night Hunter. If your stick sensitivity is high enough, Crane can usually turn fast enough even when the Night Hunter is coming from directly behind, but Crane does have a weakness, and that is when the Night Hunter is pouncing from above. Crane does not like looking up, especially if you turn on your UV flashlight before the pounce animation even begins. Crane usually will just stand there like an idiot and get pounced anyways, like right there. But there is a way to do this, and that is to wait for the Night Hunter to start pouncing you, and then turn on your light, and then then look up like right there first wait till the tendrils are around you then shine then look up or even better yet you can look up then shine that's usually more successful but even when you do it right sometimes the night hunter will break through the uv flashlight and pounce you anyways and it's just a shitty thing that happens sometimes last thing i want to go over is when the uv spit wears off you should have full capability of your flashlight it should be full but sometimes it's not full so just make sure you're not holding down your flashlight button when you get your flashlight back Next item on our list is Zaid's flares. Now, these are way better than regular flares, I'll go over that in a little bit, but you need a blueprint for these flares, which you can get from a quest from a person located at this safe zone. Now, when you get to the safe zone, you're going to find Zaid in this garage, just talk to him and he'll give you the quest. Now, flares are very important during zombie invasions because after you get hit by UV spits, if you don't have flares, you're pretty much screwed. So make sure you have flares of some kind, even regular flares will do. But there's a better way to throw flares, and that is by looking behind you, then throwing. That way, Crane will instantly throw them instead of doing the whole animation. But right there, as you can see, I was able to block the Night Hunter's pounce just in time by throwing it instantly. Right here, I use just the regular animation, and it takes too long. I get pounced. That's why you want to look behind you instead. It works way better. Right here, I'm going to give you another example. Instantly throw that flare, instantly block that pounce, and then you're going to be fine. But you get regular flares each time you die in zombie invasions when the night hunter kills you once you get two flares of course i'm going to compare regular flares to zaid's flares i went ahead and threw them down from a far distance because i wanted to see if the radius was actually bigger according to the rumor it is but as you can see zaid's flares on the right last a lot longer than regular flares almost twice as long now i wanted to see as the night hunter if the radius was bigger but as you can see here the radiuses are the same so there's no difference when it comes to radius 
Next item on our list is the Nighthunter Booster. This is loved by many, including myself, but you get the blueprint for Nighthunter Boosters after your first Night Invasions match, along with one of the ingredients, which is a Hunter Gland. Here is the Nighthunter Booster blueprint located in my blueprints, of course, and the ingredients, but this item is loved because it makes Crane run a lot faster, which means you can get a lot more done while the Nighthunter is dead. I wanted to see if it would help me deal more damage to the Nighthunter, and after I was testing one-handed weapons, punches, drop kicks, and everything else I found that it didn't make a difference everything did the same damage with and without the night hunter boosters but I wanted to see if I could take more damage and I was successful with the claw test I found that crane will take half damage with claws anyways when he's on night hunter boosters but I also tested the ground pounds and the tackles of course and it made no difference. 900 boosters didn't help with that at all. I also want to see if it would help me do more damage to the nest, if I could destroy nests faster. I used a knife during this test just because I thought I could get more accurate reading, and I was actually right. As you can see, I'm destroying the nest at the same time. I actually destroyed the nest faster without the 900 boosters, and that's not because it's better without the boosters or anything, it's just because I was swinging the knife faster. But I wanted to see if one-handed weapons work better with 900 boosters, and it kind of does because, as we all know, Crane does do more damage to the nest with a hacking motion, but sometimes he will move to a side-to-side -side swiping motion. But, as you can see here, I was able to destroy the nest with the 900 boosters because Crane would do nothing but hack. He never moved to the side-to-side -side, uh, swipe motion, which will slow you down while you're trying to destroy the nest. So, it is useful with one-handed weapons, I think, anyways. But, overall, 900 boosters are only useful when it comes to running. Next item on our list is the Cloak Potion. This is very useful, not only because it makes you go invisible to the Night Hunter, but it makes you go invisible to the Horde as well, making this item extremely useful. Now, you get the blueprint to make Cloak Potions at this safe zone here. Once you get to the safe zone, you're going to be looking for a woman named Dahlia. You're going to find her behind a stove, stirring a pot. There she is. Now, you're going to talk to her. She's going to give you a bunch of missions. You need to go through all the missions, test out all these potions that she wants you to test until finally you get the Cloak Potion Blueprint. It's very easy to make. Now, one downfall to the Cloak Potion is once you use it, if the Night Hunter claws you, um, you're gonna have to wait for the cooldown to wear off until you can actually use another Cloak Potion. That's why I like using the Camouflage skill. You get this skill once you reach Survival Level 9. You can use a skill point to buy it, but it works just like Cloak. You're gonna be invisible to the Horde as well as the Night Hunter. Of course, from the Night Hunter's perspective, you're gonna be glowing bright red, but you're gonna be invisible to his right arm making it very hard to tackle you and attack you in other ways and just finding you of course but there's a right way to use it and a wrong way to use camouflage if you let crane wipe that shit all over his face you're going to be blind but if you use an animation like side dash or jump or if you just swing your weapon uh, before he starts wiping it on his face you're still going to have the cloak effect um, and you're going to be able to see which makes it very awesome now it works just like cloak if the night hunter swings at you and hits you it's gonna go away but unlike cloak you can just keep using it over and over again there's no cooldown but it does last longer than cloak also making camouflage way more effective as long as you don't wipe it all over your face and eyes i don't know why crane does that shit the last item i'm gonna cover for this list of awesome items is the shield you get the shield at survival level eight of course now uh, this this is very useful for blocking spits, but it does take up a slot and there's more useful items that you could use. But here I'm blocking UV spits and everything and it works. The Night Hunter can't pounce you anymore after you block a spit. Back in the day, once you block the spit, the Night Hunter usually had a window to pounce you. But if you get stuck with a spit, like I said, it won't work. The spit's gonna explode on you just as if you weren't using the shield. Back in the day, that wasn't the case. Uh, when spit stuck to you, you could pull out a shield and block it, which was pretty cheap. I could see why people were triggered off of that, and I can see why Techland patched it. But that's it when it comes to the shield, really. You can just block spits that land right next to you. Um, it's not very useful because, like I said, you can just grapple away from it, dodge away from it, and you could use your extra item slot for something more useful. I'm not going to cover any of the exploit items like Super Molotov cocktails used to destroy the nests in seconds, or anything like that. Smoke grenades, no. I don't like to win that way. 
but um, those are the most legit items that you could use from the grapple hook all the way down to the shield you can use those items it's not cheating it's not even cheap but if you can use them correctly like I showed you you could be a pro at this game anyways guys that's it for this video tell me what you think in the comments about this list of items again I'm not gonna cover any items that you could use to cheat with like smoke grenades super Molotov cocktails I know people are gonna bring it up like why didn't you go over smoke grenades um, that's cheating you know I don't like that shit but those are the items that you can use to win legit. But guys, thanks again for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video.